It's about time. You guys are saying it differently. You're saying about time, but I'm saying it's about that time. Let's finish the Roman made mother chaser. Oh my goodness, there's paint on it and there wasn't in the last video, I know. I, for a while there, I didn't have intentions of finishing this bait. Roman made as the company, they don't appreciate when I do this, when I make their baits. I'm not making their baits exactly how they make their baits. And I think that they're thinking that people are gonna think that uh, their baits are made this way, which they aren't. And I think they take more pride in the way they make their baits and they probably do a way better job than I'm doing. So don't think this is how Roman Made makes their baits. This is how a hairy fella in his garage makes his baits. Solid intro, right? All right, let's go. Like I said, didn't have intentions of finishing this, but I put paint on it anyway, because I it just seemed like a waste. I, I would finish it for myself, you know, if not for a video, but we're finishing it for a video. This is where I'm at. I've been having to sand and re-sand and re-go over and sand and go over and sand the bottom here. I keep getting these coming out, these plugs. They're so big, they come out. So I sand and reseal and sand and reseal. It, it might just not work. I might just have some bumpage down there, which I'm pretty cool with because I'm not selling this for $950. If I was, I wouldn't be cool with that, but I'm, I'm not selling this at all, by the way. That's, that's illegal, sell somebody else's product. And I'm not gonna paint it exactly how a normal mother chaser is. I wanna put my own spin on it. I always put my own spin on things. That was the chair I didn't fart. The first thing different I'm going to do is add some serrations to the bottom flank. Cause that just looks cool on fish. I'm gonna use this sponge material that I got from a box of owner stinger treble hooks. You don't have to use this exact material. And I'm gonna put it here, spray, move it, spray, move it, spray, move it, spray. Little bit of texture. Made sure to stay nice and sloppy too. I want it looking natural. That's always why it looks bad. Because you want it to look natural. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The worst part about painting lures is that you have to do everything twice and usually the second time around, you do it better because it's the second time you're doing it. And this side is objectively better. No opinion here. That turned out better. Good texture. Next element of texture. Let me clean my airbrush and I'll, I'll tell you. This stuff. I've been appreciating this stuff more and more. Just a random pattern net. No words can describe this material. I, I'm drawing a blank, but I'm gonna go over to the top of this bait. I'm gonna get splotchy with it and just psh, move it, psh, move it, psh, and do the top of this bait that way. I have not decided on a color. Ooh, I just had a better idea. I'm gonna do that to the red line and kind of tame this red color. It's too intense right now. And I'm gonna do that with a red. Should I do an orangish? Like a, yeah, like an oxide. I'm gonna oxidize this red. I might do two colors. I might do this and silver and just tame that red. Or I could mix it. I'm gonna mix this with silver. Wow, what a brilliant idea. Something I don't do enough of on this channel is mix paint. Let's just mix it with the platinum I had right here. Need some reducer. I got a big bottle now. Just got that yesterday. Since I'm getting all mixy and stuff and artistic, that just means more supplies, really. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was a very correct decision. That'll look a lot better. That's kind of a natural color. I know it's super orange and it, there's not much natural about that, but the iridescence of a fish has some pretty crazy colors in it. And this is kind of one of them. What's all that crap in there? There's like black flakes. Where did that come from? You guys see those black things? I hope that doesn't clog up my airbrush because I'm gonna shoot this anyway. Living on the edge. What a color. Wow. Let's get it on the bait. Whew, that's gonna be good. This is gonna be good, fellas. You guys have, no, you don't. You don't have the right angle at all. Let me finish this, I'll show you. It's good. Do you guys see that? Super pearly, super correct color. I'm gonna come in on the outside of this stuff now and probably with a, I don't know, something light and pearly and, and narrow this red stripe. I don't like the red stripe, can you tell? I'm trying to do everything I can to cover up the red stripe, but that was a wonderful start to covering up that red stripe. 
We narrowed that red stripe in. It looks bad right now, I know, but more colors are going on, so don't worry. I'm adding texture with the pearlized paint too, or the pearlized white, to the top here. Just with an airbrush and getting it splotchy and putting it in there. I think now what it needs is a darker color on the top too. We're still texturizing. We're still trying to get this bait into its texturized form. I'm thinking, I don't want to do gold. Gold is a step too far, that's too much color. This is the color scheme of the bait. That green, that orangish red with the oxidation, and then the silver. The silver contrasted with like pearl white and pearl platinum and stuff. I have some stuff that's going to be delivered today on the way, and it's like holographic film, foil, film, vinyl, heat set, shrinks to the bait, and uh, I'm gonna put that on the gills once it gets here. Some of the gill plates. A lot of gill plates on this bait, just some of them. Yeah, okay, what? Dark color. Maybe I should stray away from anything with too much color and just do, do like a black. A deep, no, no. Let's just do raw umber. Can't get fancy here, let's just do raw umber. So yeah, when I'm painting this, I wanna make it look like the source of this darker color is coming from the top. I don't wanna start at the bottom and bring it up. Start, up. start at the top and bring it down. Trying to get it even on both sides, like the texture of the pattern and everything, but that's pretty even. That's a beautiful pattern too. So now I'm trying to cut a stencil to match something. There's a gill right here that I need to cover before I paint it. You just gotta creep up on the angle and eventually you get it. Boom. So I still got some of this color and behind that gill is where it belongs. That was kind of dumb of me. My finger was in the way. That's acceptable, I guess. Second one is always better. Always. That is so annoying. Because then you're not even happy that you did a good job. It's just, I don't know. Maybe you guys can't tell the difference, but second one's better. This bait's looking spiffy. So a bait of this magnitude is a difficult thing to uh, get mesh around the entire thing and then paint it correctly and it, like have all that go smooth. You pretty much have to segment it out like this and I end up just nailing some mesh to the table against the bait, just like you saw. And then you can, with clamps, just push it down the nails so it holds to the bait better. Then over here I just put a clamp on what's hanging over and it bends it down and over the side. Keeps it pressed against the bait. That's really all you're going for. It's looking like on the real mother chasers, the scales are all one color. Oh, they got that paint scheme too. It's like a, just a silver trout kind of thing. Okay. I'm just gonna paint whatever scales I want. I'm gonna go for multiple colors, I think though. First, I'm going with a very light coating of silver. It might be kind of stupid to go any further than that. Maybe I'm just gonna do one color. Cause when I try to think about what else I would do to this, I'm drawing a blank. Just kidding, I'm gonna put some white down here. I was drawing a blank, but this'll be good. That'll be absolutely delicious. Time for the peeky poo. There's the scales. Subtle, but totally still there. And then those white scales on the belly. Mm, not too bad. I'm getting mother chaser vibes. Let's fi I'm gonna finish these scales and get back to you. Got it! Pegboard accessories. And this stuff. This is vinyl. Let me make sure. It's holographic adhesive craft vinyl. It's a six foot by 12 foot roll, or sorry, six foot by 12 inch roll. You, you look up those words I just said on Amazon, you can get this stuff. I don't know if this stuff is gonna work well. 
I'm counting on it accepting a heat gun uh, and then molding itself to the shape of the bait with the heat gun. I, I don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna give her a shot. There's like glitter and I got like stripey glitter, holographic. I might use this, but I'm more going for these two. This is just straight, smooth, holographic vinyl. I'm gonna test it on something first. It doesn't feel too thick. It feels like it's gonna do the job, just right off the bat. I just undid a roll and feeling great. I have this little uh, failed carving of something that I was gonna do in the past. Let's get a little piece of this. Oh, it says remove the clear layer before cutting. Not reading just instructions. Very thin little clear layer of some sort of film. I'm just gonna put it on this bait like that. It's not the right shape. Maybe I can, I'll cut it to, let's peel the pretty part off here. That's, this is gonna work. Stick that on. Heat gun. You cannot ask for better than that. It took the perfect shape of that fin down there and everything, it stretched. It's still super holographic and shiny. Perfect, perfect. That was cheap too. You get a six foot by 12 inch roll for like, I think it was 12 bucks. You get this for 12 bucks. Whoa, okay. Game changer. It's completely opaque though. That's a, you can't get background colors to show up. It's completely opaque and it's really on there. That's the stuff. Let's make this bait pretty. <laughs> I'm building up white in those two spots right there with thin layers. This is the second coat on this part. It takes about four. There's just some stuff like this that I need to get done before I start using that holographic vinyl. It's kind of a weird way of doing it, but I just shove my fingernail into the crease and make a mark on the foily stuff. And that usually works. Sometimes it doesn't. And if you're a little bit off, like I just cut that a little bit off, you just do this, move it back a bit and then kind of restart, figure out where else you need to cut. This is just something you really gotta take your time with. Some serious time taking right here. And even after you get it on, modification, modifications can be made. I'm happy with that. That's gonna look sweet. The little piece of flash right there. Trying to get as much of it adhered as I can because it's in the right spot. And then the heat gun's gonna loosen everything up and make it just fall into place. Very lightly. If you're bringing a knife back to this to get to remove some material, you gotta be careful. Not just careful, but careful. For me, that's clean. Let's get some heat on it. That is a wonderful material. Kind of weird how well that works. No measuring, you just stick your thumbnail in there and whoo, it just works. I like the stickiness level of this stuff too. It's not too sticky, so you can remove it and replace it if you messed up. Yeah, if it's sticky level 9000, it's just gonna rip off all that paint on your bait too. Boy, luckily I have not trimmed my fingernails in a while. This thumbnail is coming in great use. Just stunning. Nice. That was a darker vinyl. It's got some different holographic colors too, just for that side fin. Was even able to get some spines on those fins. That looks pretty groovy. I don't know if I want to add any more foil. Just an accent on that gill of that. That might be enough. There is no other type of eye to put on a bait like this. But a dead meat custom. Gorgeous eye, Matt. One of my favorites.
Just, I, went, I just went with a natural color. Bait's pretty much done. I painted the top with that same, uh, where are you? Is it raw umber? Yes, raw umber. And I painted the belly white too. I don't wanna do more than this to this bait. All of the subtle details are there. I'm good with that. It's just my opinion about the way I paint baits, but I think I can easily overdo it, in my opinion. So, I'm leaving it there. It's time for clear coat. I have been spraying these pieces with this KBS Diamond Finish Aerosol. Not an ideal lure clear coat, but it is all that I can put on this bait. I can't turn this thing on a rotisserie. I can't fit this thing inside my UV box for my UV clear coat. Um, th this is all I can do for this bait, which is fine. I'm on like number four clear coat number four and it's getting very smooth and it's glossy and it looks just fine. I'll be happy with it in the end. But I would guess if I even had the right fishing rod and reel to cast this thing, I would guess like the paint on this bait wouldn't last half of a season. Definitely not. Making sure that clear coat does not run. I thought I saw it getting a little runny. Kind of annoying that I can't get the clear coat that I would prefer on this bait, but it's a gimmick bait anyway. Like I'm going to try to cast this thing a few times in my pike spot, potentially catch a pike. <laughs> but mainly I'm just trying to see how it works. Oh, and I pretty much overlooked this, this entire build. I need to make a tail fin for that. And I'm thinking Lexan. The tail fin on these are usually clear. Maybe it's slight dark tint to them. Let's just carve out a clear Lexan tail. And that'll last forever. I think the tail fan on these also have some sort of like thinner section to them that makes it kind of jointed and might make the action smoother. I think I can get a good action with a, with a polycarbonate hard tail. It's gonna be fine. I made a quarter inch slot. I got my big boy hands today. That thing is hard to hold on to. But I'm trying to give it a taper so it narrows towards the ends of the fin like a real fin. Then I gotta cut the spines and polish it all up. I think I'm going to super glue one side of this to a piece of wood. Not too much glue though. Like, oh geez. Cause I need to be able to get this off. Now I can sand this side a lot easier without worrying about my fingers. And it's not just easier to sand, it's a more even sand, so it's going to look better in the end. Wow, that's hard to get off. I used a lot of glue. Sharp quarter inch chisel, shooting places. It's, it's a bad, bad feeling. And then I'm gonna glue this to the other side, but I'm gonna glue it where the tail's gonna insert to the body so it's not that visible. It's not visible at all. You don't need a lot, apparently. Learned that the first time around. It's a heck of a bait. I haven't shown you it after clear coat. I've just been working on this tail. Or did I show you? It's, it's the next day, and I don't know why, but it's the next day. <laughs> Looking stellar. There are major differences to this bait compared to the real Mother Chaser. Like, the real Mother Chaser has foil all the way everywhere around the head, and I think they come back with an airbrush and hide the seam of that foil on the top and the bottom. Um, I foiled the fin, though. Isn't that cool? I foiled the fin. And it's got dead meat customized, which is super cool. And I put this pattern on the back. I didn't do any dotting. This is like a mix between a, like a pike and a trout. And I got the serrations on the bottom here. I'm cool too, guys. I do fancy things. Full sheet of 220. Let's put this down on my nice new flat stainless steel table here. Always wanted one of these. Go to town again. I know sandpaper cuts both directions. Uh, I guess I can. I thought I couldn't. I thought I'd mess up the paper. What am I saying? But I'm just gonna keep doing this till it's nice and smooth.
Just lure making. I'm making a, a crazy choice. I'm just going crazy right here. The fin on the body is that foil, and it was easy to serrate with a knife after I got it on, so that's what I'm doing. Where's my pencil? And yeah, that rendered all of that sanding I did completely pointless. Lure making is full of that type of stuff, so I'm used to it. I think this vinyl adhesive backing is strong enough to keep this on here. And once I heat set it too, that's gonna make it really strong. We'll see. If it's not, I can always make a new tail fin for this thing, but this is good enough for now. This might be satisfying. Not very satisfying so far. Just kind of tricky and weird. It's the new viral compilation theme. Tricky and weird. Ooh, I forgot to take the plastic off the top. That's why this is difficult. This stuff. Yep, still tricky and weird. Oh, wow. Okay. That makes it a lot easier. You can just run something sharp against the edge and then just pull it off and it comes off perfectly. It's good to know for the other side. Beautiful. That's kind of satisfying. Sweet, holographic tail. That does a really good job. You can even see it setting into some of the sanding grooves when you do that. That's on there. That's cool. I realized I don't need to be doing this with a utility knife. All I need to do is score it. And I'm just using my pointy thing here. Using the edge of the fin as a guide too, with my finger, scoring some lines. Should be able to get it very even this way too. Lines like that. It's kind of a mind melting thing to work with, the holographic foil and trying to make marks on it. You just don't know what you're looking at eventually. It just looks like this the whole time. Where's the line? You cutting it right? Who knows? That works for me. Such a delicate process. When you're adding the joint connections, you don't want to get super glue in certain places because it just ruins the joint for the rest of the lure's life. Crazy, complicated, awesome swim baits like this are nerve wracking at the end because getting super glue in the wrong spot sucks. And I tend to not use an accelerator with the super glue. I want that glue to sit there for as long as possible and soak in and cure on its own time. I don't want to just cap off and cure the front of the hole because that can stop air from getting down into the, the pilot hole. Am I making sense? I just want the whole thing to cure well and slow. And believe it or not, Pieces of wire like this going into a bait this big will hold all this together. I mean, tugging against these when they're secure and in there is probably, you probably need over 500 pounds of force. You need a lot of force to pull that out. Don't want that. There we go. Don't need the drippy poo here. No drippy poo. There's no rush. No rush. Oh my goodness, that was perfect. That was phenomenal. That went smooth as could be. Lined right up. Don't have to adjust those eyelets at all. I'm just gonna hold this here for a while. We're glued up. I epoxied that tail fin in. It's done. It's all done. What a monstrosity, in a good way. <laughs> I can't even get a good camera angle to show the whole thing, and it's glory. Is that the thumbnail? <laughs> it's very lure-like. It's not just a big heaping mess of something just to be big. It's very lure-like. 
Even though it's a giant thing, it looks like a fish catcher, you know, which is a good feeling. You've created a beautiful bait, Roman made. Would I pay $950 to have this? Maybe if I had more money. Maybe. I'm probably gonna get a lure collection going. I already do, of a bunch that I made. And there's a lot that people have sent me too. So maybe I'll get one of these one day. All right, I started this project four months ago. I probably have uh, mm, uh, uh, there's less than 12 hours of hands-on work, like work that I was actually not drying time, not taking a break for months, because I did, <laughs> but actual hands-on work that went into this bait is probably like 12 hours. If I did nothing but work on this bait and how many days it would take me to finish, uh, this could get done in four, four or five days, I would assume, with drying time included. That gives you an idea. Maybe three. If you were really, really busting your butt and you were working day and night, you could get it done in three days. With all the diamond clear coats I put in this, on this and stuff, yeah, even, you could even do it in three days. Okay, there is one thing left to do. That is put hooks on it and go see it, how it works. You can bet all of your butt that I'm not gonna catch a fish with this. I'm not even, I'm not even going there. We're just going to go see how this works. I'll fish it for a while, but if I do catch a fish, I'll cry. You'll see me cry on camera if I catch a fish. <laughs> Let's go. Imagine you see somebody walking up to a fishing spot with this thing tied on. Coolest person at the fishing spot for sure. Can't get any cooler. Bigger the bait, cooler the dude. This is it, folks. I chose the pike spot. Why? Because it's tucked away back in the trees, not because there's pike or anything. I, I'm not going to catch anything, so I was just trying to get away from the wind. Let's make some casts. Look at how much of a bend it puts in this eight ounce rod, two to eight ounce browser swim bait rod. That's not normal. Oh Lord. Oh, it swims. Oh, I'm gonna break my rod. I'm gonna hold my thumb on my spool and throw this bait out there and bring it back in and hopefully, hopefully you guys will see the action. Are you guys seeing how <laughs> how wide that swim is? Okay, I need to throw it farther. This is actually the best action I've ever got out of a swim bait, but it's really easy to get good action with a bigger bait. So spool is free. This is this feels very weird just chucking something this insane and nice. Okay. <laughs> Pull so hard. Did I just catch a fish? Oh no, 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 it got tangled. Okay. Whew. Whew. Okay. I need to throw it to where it's not getting tangled too. I don't want to hook myself either while I throw it. I'm gonna hold it by the head and keep my line, keep my rod tip up. Okay, here it is. It would do a full 360 if I let it really easy. It'd probably do circles. Wow, I wish you guys could see that better. Maybe I'll have to go to a different spot. It's seriously doing the furthest glides I've ever seen. Ooh. It's like flipping a two pound bass onto the bank when I take it out of the water. I don't know why I'm feeling like a fish might bite this. And I keep tangling it every time I cast it because I'm throwing it with my hand. Should I try to cast it? I think I'm gonna try to cast it for real. I'm gonna break my rod. 
and lose the bait. For YouTube. Oh, that wasn't that bad. Just has a great action. I'm so happy that it sits per like it sits perfectly level. I had to weigh each piece separately, but it sits perfectly level still, and it just glides effortless effortlessly. I need to get to a spot where you guys can see it better. I think I know exactly where to go too, so you guys can see it. I'm just, I'm actually fishing this bait for a bit. Everything's holding together, you know. If a 50 inch muskie comes by, I'll catch it, maybe. If he's hungry. It's a fishable bait. Okay, we have reached clearer water. Man. Just a stupidly good action. <laughs> you think they heard that? That was the stealth entry for this bait. That's as quiet as it gets. Yeah, the line's just going back and forward like five feet each time. Jeez, so much pull. This is fun to fish with just to make it do stuff that's cool, like glide extremely far. That's really the only cool thing it does, but I'm having fun. I think that's the closest I should ever throw that to the bank. <laughs> In conclusion, it's just a crazy, insane, magnificent bait. It's what a bait. Held up well, too. I fished with that bait for just about as long as I'd fish with any other bait for a, like a one day or something, so. But we didn't catch anything, darn. I already am thinking about and know what I would do different to get a bait of that profile to cast a little nicer and work even better than it does, even though it works amazing. That's, I think that's the most impressive thing about this bait is how well it works. The glide is so far and consistent. But I got a few things in mind that in the future I will do with baits this big. So this wasn't pointless. There was a point to all of this. You live and you learn. I'm feeling like the video should be over. Video's over. On to the next bait. It's a heck of a bait. That's eh, acceptable, I guess. Tricky and weird. I just shoved my fingernail into the crease. <laughs> About time. For YouTube. <laughs>